Since we're getting pretty close to the first customer deliveries of the Cybertruck, um, leaks have been coming out. Like for instance, this image that Mike, who goes by at Tesla Truck Club on Twitter, tweeted out. And this shows um, some side body panels of the Tesla Cybertruck and some of the Giga castings in the background. Interestingly enough though, as I'll talk about in this video, this picture does actually raise some questions about the actual um, design of the exoskeleton itself. So that's what I'd like to talk about, what I believe this image reveals about the structural design of the Tesla Cybertruck. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. When the Cybertruck was first revealed back in 2019, um, Tesla talked about the 300 series cold rolled stainless steel that would make up the vehicle's exterior and exoskeleton. In fact, Tesla's website still refers to this stainless steel exoskeleton, but do note here that it refers to it as a structural skin. And I believe that's very significant. And I'll come back to that topic later on in the video. Now, when it comes to the actual stainless steel being used in the Cybertruck, Tesla didn't just go with an off the shelf stainless steel alloy, but they're actually developing, or I should say, they've developed their own stainless steel alloy. And they actually have a dedicated team um, that works for both Tesla and SpaceX, according to this Electrek article from 2021, that is tasked with developing new alloys. I talked about this alloy quite in depth in a past video um, because somewhat recently Tesla did file for a patent um, for a new stainless steel alloy. And it describes this alloy as having improved hardness and corrosion resistance. So I have no doubt that the stainless steel being used in the Cybertruck will be extremely strong and extremely durable. Um, but going back to that exoskeleton design, the exoskeleton is supposed to allow for a very impressive uh, payload capacity of up to 3,500 pounds. And uh, originally Tesla mentioned on the website that the longest range version of the Cybertruck was supposed to have a towing capacity of over 14,000 pounds. For reference, the Ford F-150 Lightning has a payload capacity of up to 2,235 pounds for the standard range version or up to 1,952 pounds for the extended range version. So when you put it up against the competition, 3,500 pounds of payload capacity is quite impressive. And once again, um, the exoskeleton design was supposed to be a big part of that. Now, I believe it still is, but it might have changed slightly just how this works. So going back to this image that was tweeted out by at Tesla Truck Club on Twitter, once again, you can see there the side panels of the Cybertruck. However, they do look somewhat similar to a traditional uh, body design, say like the Model Y or something like the Model S, for instance. For example, here's a cutaway image of the Model Y, and you can see the side structural components there. And here's a side cutaway of the Model S. Once again, you can see the structural components there. The fact that the Cybertruck frame um, really looks a lot like the uh, frames of Tesla's existing vehicles was brought up in this Electrek article, where the author of this article wrote, quote, it's not clear if there are any structural parts in the bodies seen in those pictures. They look more like traditional vehicle bodies with larger cast parts. So because of these similarities, does that mean that Tesla has backtracked on the exoskeleton and that the Cybertruck, the production version, won't actually have that? Well, my theory is that the Cybertruck stainless steel exterior skin, I believe this exterior skin will act as an extra reinforcement in addition to the more traditional structural components that we see in this picture. I believe that extra support structure, that exterior skin, um, could be what allows the Cybertruck to still have a very impressive payload capacity, even if the design has changed a little bit. Once again, notice how the Tesla website specifically describes structural skin in reference to this stainless steel exoskeleton. Now, of course, there is a chance that this was the original design, and this is what Tesla meant by that design, but um, that image does look a little different than the images that Tesla shared in the past of the side of the Cybertruck. Obviously, those images had more of the side body panels on them. But once again, the previous 
um, illustrations or images, whatever you want to call them, it looked like the side panels were quite integrated into that frame part. It looks like now that the side panels um, will be attached to that existing frame design. So I'm not sure if this was always the design or if there have been changes, but changes from prototype to production should be expected, especially when it comes to how a vehicle will be produced. Now, I believe there's also a chance that um, this is kind of a half step. So if you remember back to when Tesla first started uh, bringing out their underbody castings, uh, first of all, they started out with only having a rear underbody casting. And that casting was cast in two different pieces that then were attached together. Then they, of course, moved to a single piece casting. And now they have model Ys that are being built with both a front and rear underbody casting. So they kind of um, did some half steps towards that. I believe there is a possibility that initially uh, the Cybertruck will be produced with kind of a half step there. The exterior stainless steel skin will still add structural support to the frame and still allow for a very impressive payload capacity. However, maybe it'll morph later on into um, a more structural design and a more single piece design with exterior facing panels built in and folded into um, the structural panel parts of the back as well. Obviously, um, this is just conjecture right now, but that's my theory on all this. Nonetheless, the exterior stainless steel panels should be bent or folded into their respective shape instead of having uh, traditional stamped body parts because stainless steel uh, really can't be stamped like aluminum can. So um, theoretically, not having to have all these stamping machines that should save space and make Cybertruck production, once it's all figured out and running smoothly, it should be more efficient than a traditional process. And that's kind of one of the big points here with the Cybertruck. If my theory is correct, and this is kind of a half step towards uh, the future design, it could have been something that Tesla did in order to get this product to market um, quicker than it would have taken to completely develop out the full exoskeleton design, kind of more what I and others were expecting. When it comes to the manufacturing volume and how many Tesla Cybertrucks um, that we should expect per year, once fully ramped up, at least initially, um, the latest number that I've seen was shared by this Electrek article, and that number is apparently somewhere around 375,000 Cybertrucks per year, according to information that Tesla sent to suppliers. Very excitingly, it looks like the first stages of production are actually beginning uh, for the Cybertruck production lines. And this information comes from a tweet from at Henrix Zane, who goes by Zangler on Twitter. In this tweet, it's written, quote, Cybertruck QA builds have commenced. Delivery event likely in October. So really to wrap all this up, the Cybertruck exoskeleton design may have changed just a little bit. Um, but even if the stainless steel skin is just an additional structural support, it really won't matter in the end. I believe the truck will still have a great payload capacity either way. And maybe, as I mentioned previously, this change allows Tesla to get the truck to market sooner. And also, as I mentioned, maybe this is a half step towards the original design like Tesla did with underbody castings. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to hear your observations based on the image that was leaked out of the side panels of the Cybertruck. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.